Hi, I'm Luna. I'm gonna read. Marvin Redpost. Is he a girl? By Louis Satcher. Winner of the Newbery Medal for Holes. Chapter One. A real girl. Casey Hamilton said, "If you kiss yourself on the elbow, you're turned into a girl." Marvin Redpost looked at her. They sat down to each other in Mrs. North's class. Casey had a ponytail that stuck out of the side of her head instead of the back. It's true," said Casey. "If the boy kisses his elbow, he'll turn into a girl, and if a girl kisses her elbow, she'll turn into a boy." Can you change back? Asked Marvin. Sure," said Casey. "You just have to kiss yourself your elbow again." Marvin thought、um, thought about it, but he wasn't about to try. Ali is not in front of Casey. Doesn't matter which elbow you kiss, he asked. Neither one," said Casey. "But it has to to be on a, on the outside, where it's hard, and not the soft part on the inside." Have you ever kissed your elbow? Marvin asked her. No, she exclaimed. What do you think I am? Some kind of weirdo? Marvin shrugged. He didn't think Casey Appleton was weird. Who's traveling? Asked Mrs. North. Marvin and Casey. Marvin turned red. Everyone, everyone was looking at him and Casey. He hoped no one thought he liked her. He folded his arms on his desk and landed his head on top of them. He looked at his elbow. First of all, he didn't believe he'd really turn into a girl. Second of all, he didn't know if he his mouth could even reach in his elbow. He slowly moved his mouth toward his elbow. He wasn't going to kiss it. He. Just wanted to see if his mouth was rich. It didn't. He tried a different way. He sat up straight. Then he reached behind himself, as if to stretch his back. He stretched out his lips. Oh my gosh! Said Casey. She beat her fingers. What? Marvin demanded. I saw you," said Casey. "You were trying to kiss your elbow." Here's a picture of Marvin trying to kiss his elbow. I was not," said Marvin. "I was stretching my back. You want to be a girl? You want to be a girl?" said Casey. "I had a itch," said Marvin. "You're so weird," said Casey. "You're the one. You're the one who's weird," said Marvin. "You think everyone who stretch stretches back is really trying, really trying to kiss his elbow?" "Not everyone," said Casey. "Just you." Marvin, Casey said, "Mrs. North, do I have to separate to you two?" "Oh, Marvin and Casey," said Judy. The other children laughed. Kiss laughed. Marvin burns his head under his arms. She is the one who's weird. He thought, "I will never try to turn into a girl right in the middle of the class. I wouldn't change into a girl anyway. But if I did, I wouldn't do it in the school." Casey. Melanie said, loud enough for Marvin to hear. I think Marvin likes you. Casey looked at Marvin. Oh my gosh! She said. She bit her finger. That was the another reason Marvin thought Casey was weird. She always said, "Oh my gosh!" and bit her finger. And her sideways ponytail was weird too. The bell rang. He went outside to recess. What are you talking? What are you and Casey? What are you and Casey talking talking about? Asked the restored old bride, as Marvin's best friend. Nothing, said Marvin. She's so weird. You don't like her, do you? Asked Nick. Nick Tuffle was also Marvin's best friend. No way, said Marvin. You want you want to hear what she said? What? Asked his two fr- best friend. It's so weird, said Marvin. She said, "He's not." 
she said she talked to dog and cat. Nick and Stuart laughed. How weird, said Stuart. She's so weird, said Nick. They got in line to pay, play a wobble. Marvin didn't know why he had to lie to, to his two best friends. Chapter two, but. Marvin Rapos lived in two-story gray house. There was a fence around the house. The fence was all white except for one rapos next to the gate. Marvin tapped the rapos as he walked through the gate. He stopped outside to front of the door. He tried to kiss in his elbow again. What are you doing, Mar? asked Jacob coming home behind him. Jacob was Mar Marvin's older brother, Marvin Frost. Uh, he said he looked at his mentor. I'm practicing. I'm practicing karate. Cool, said Jacob. They walked inside again. Cool, said Jacob. They walked inside together. Marvin admired his old brother. Jacob was cool. There was no way Jacob would never ever try to kiss his elbow. Marvin also had a little sister named Lindsay. Lindsay was four. I got a sticker, Lindsay said. Good, said Marvin. He sat down his books on the chicken counter. You can have it, said Lindsay. I don't want it, Marvin asked her. I'm telling, Lindsay snapped. What? asked Marvin. Mommy, Lindsay shouted. Their mommy came. Their mother, their mother came into the kitchen. Marvin said he didn't like my sticker, said Lindsay. He said it was a stupid sticker. I never said that, said Marvin. Lindsay learned that stickers in Gaimasmatics, Mrs. Rapost said properly. That's good, Lindsay, said Marvin. Watch, said Lindsay. Marvin watched his sister do a somersault in the hall. That's great, Lindsay, he told her. He meant it too. He meant it too. Marvin could, couldn't do somersault. He just thought the girls were better some, as somersault than boys. Just before going to bed, Marvin tried to kiss his owl one more time. He's been trying all evening between homework problems before and after he brushed his teeth while feeding General Jackson. General Jackson he was his pet lizard. The, the General Jackson lived in the glass cage next to Marvin's desk. This is stupid, Marvin's neck, Marvin told General Jackson. Even if I could kiss my elbow, nothing would happen. General Jackson took out his tongue. Marvin was wearing Ninja Turtle pajamas. He liked, he liked being a boy. He was glad he was a boy. Girls were stupid and weird. One thing was for sure. He did not want to turn into a girl, at least not forever. Maybe it would be okay for a few minutes, just to see what it was like. But you can turn into a girl just by kissing your elbow, he thought. That was stupid. Casey Appleton was stupid. Why would anyone want to turn into a girl if girls were always saying stupid things like that? He tried kissing his elbow again. It just bugged, bugged him that he couldn't do it. It was twelve o'clock midnight. Marvin lay, lay asleep, asleep, all twist and tangle, and tangle in his cheek. She was hugging his pillow. Pillow. A full moon shone through the window. He rolled over. Then he flopped back to the another way. As he rolled. And flap around in his bed. In his bed, he got more and more tangled in his sheet. Then, still hugging his pillow, he rolled. He rolled right off the edge of the bed. But he never hit the floor. He was so tangled that the sheet held him up. A、uh, what? He said. He found himself hanging upside down, all wrapped up like a mummy. He tried to get back onto the bed. He pulled the sheet 
Suddenly, his elbow was jerked almost to his mouth. Then it bounced back. He ha he tucked the sheet again. Again, his elbow jerked to his mouth. He pulled and kept on pulling harder and harder. His elbow moved closer and closer. It felt like his arm was breaking. He stretched out his lips. It felt like his shoulder was about to pop out. He gave it one hard yank. The sheet pulled out of under the mattress. He fell to the floor, but as his head hit the carpet, he kissed himself on the el- on the elbow. Chapter three. Marvin wears the dress. Marvin got up. He strapped himself over. He was still a boy. Of course, this was a still a boy. He couldn't wait to tell Casey that it would prove once and for all she was a weird. He climbed back into bed. He no, he couldn't tell Casey. He realized that she think he was weird for kissing his elbow, but he had done it. That was the main thing. There's nothing Marvin Rappos can do. He thought. He went right to sleep. He dreamed he was playing his ba- playing baseball. Baseball, baseball. Er, were loaded, loaded, two outs last in, last in inning. His team was losing by three runs. The home run would win the game. Good. Marvin's up, as said Nick. Marvin's will hit the home run. There's nothing Marvin Rappose can do, said Marvin. Sorry, says the word. It's his elbows. It, it's his elbows, said Nick. He has the strongest elbow on the team. Marvin stepped onto the plate. The crowd was cheering. Marvin, Marvin, Marvin. Clarence was the pitcher. Clarence was the toughest kid in Marvin's class, maybe in the whole school. Marvin tapped the plate with his bat. He raised it above his shoulder. Clarence spit the dirt. Spit on the dirt. He glared at Marvin. Marvin waved the bat back and forth. He was afraid of Clarence, but tried not to show it. Suddenly, Clarence laughed. Then every, everyone else laughed too. A umpire spoke to Marvin. "I'm sorry, young man," he said, "but you can play. You're out of uniform." "Huh?" said Marvin. He looked down at his clothes. He was wearing a dress. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe my channel. Bye.